Hello and welcome to Burning Issues, the only program that provides you a glimpse inside the Wichita Fire Department. I am Battalion Chief Sid Newby. In this episode, we'll talk about the recent flooding and danger high water in the rivers, creeks, and ponds in our area with Captain Brent Holman, Lieutenant Scott Schroeder, Wichita Fire Department, Heavy Rescue Specialty Team. With us today are Lieutenant Scott Schroeder and Captain Brent Holman of the Wichita Fire Department Technical Rescue Team. Thanks for being here, guys. Hi, Sid. How are you? I'm good. You're good. Thanks. Um, Let's talk a little bit about what citizens can do to assist us if we happen to have a swift water rescue. Well, one thing they can do is, you know, an ounce of prevention. Don't put us in that situation and have to come get you. Right. Um, stay out of the swift water. Okay. It's dangerous. A lot of people, they, they tend to, to not realize how dangerous swift water is. With the recent flooding we've had and the, the way the river's been moving, you know, it there's not a lot you can do about it. You can't underestimate the power of rushing water. Right. You know, the strength of a river or the big ditch. You know, it just, it's unmatched. And where people think that, that they can get in it and play in it or whatever, it just, it takes you. Scott, what can we do as far as if the citizens witness somebody going in, what can they do to assist us? Biggest thing is try to keep an eye on them. You know, if they go under, Stay, you know, stay put where you're at. Let us know where they go under because most people are going to be found within the general small area of where they go under. If they're on top of the water still, still you can incorporate the reach, throw, row, go type deal. Which you know, if you can reach out and grab them, do so safely. If not, throw something, i.e. a rope. Let them grab onto that rope. But you know, as a citizen, do not enter the water. You know, it's just like on a house fire. Once you're out, stay out. Right. Correct. Right. Okay, and Brent, what can we do as far as members that are non-technical rescue people, members of the Wichita Fire Department, what can we do, how do we assist you? What training can we do? Well, first of all, the, a lot of the guys, that, I mean, they're not, not rescue team members, but they still have the training to be able to save somebody in a water situation. All our rigs have throw bags, life jackets, stuff like that, but even our guys um, are taught not to go in. Don't right. go in the water. Try to try to throw something to them, reach them, something like that. But uh, you know, a lot of times we're not going to be on scene first from the rescue station. But crews that are on scene, they can get eyewitness accounts, uh, start gathering information. How many victims do we have in the water? Things like that. Where are they? They can start marking locations and stuff like that. So that when we get on scene, they can they can already have gotten information to us through the radios and stuff of where we sure. where exactly we need to go so right. we can deploy as quick as we can. Exactly. And like some of the recent emergencies we've had, getting that information to us early mm -hmm. can get us in the right... Get, uh, get right downstream, point. get ahead, get a bridge ahead of where they're going, you know, make sure life jackets are all being used. Right. You know, there's different techniques we've taught them as far as with the ropes, you know, dangling ropes from a bridge. Yeah. Now, why don't you guys explain some of the training we've done recently on that? Well, we took advantage of the high water situation that uh, we had all the crews out and, and just reviewing throw bags. And uh, we have a move we call loop, swoop, and drag, which is where a couple of firefighters will, will hang a, a rope underneath a bridge. They're on top of the bridge and they'll have a spotter on the other side of it trying to see where a victim might be coming down through the water. Get the loop down there so that the victim can grab it and then the inside guy that's closer to the middle of the river, he'll let go and then they'll just kind of swing to the side. So we've been practicing that, knowing that, that we had the, the potential right. to have some swift water emergencies because we haven't had it. Right. We've, had a, you know, we've been in a drought situation for the last couple of years really and haven't had the swift water. So exactly. once the water came up, we had to do, we had to be a little more proactive and, and really start doing some training and stuff like that to get everybody uh, up to speed with with what we what we can do and recently we've had an opportunity to use that on a real life scenario a real yeah. live emergency yeah a couple different times and it worked pretty well yeah yeah um, with the high water what are you guys as far as your new equipment with the technical rescue team um, going to being able to do with the high water to practice some of your uh, well, techniques I like to say we've got all the best toys on the job uh, we've got a Zodiac boat, which is, is an inflatable with a big motor on it that, that can negotiate the swift water pretty good. We've also got a jet ski that here recently we kind of tore it up a little bit, having to, to take it over rocks and things like that just to get it deployed. 
but uh, we've got some some tools in place and and the training to uh, to be able to negotiate in the swift water so we can go get somebody the jet ski's real good as a quick you know like a primary recon get out there if we can access them we usually put two people on the jet ski and we have a rescue board that's behind it in case they're fatigued where they can't hold on to stuff we can hang off the back get them up on the board then we'll ferry to the side that way and it's a lot quicker response than actually yeah. putting the boat in the water right. which you might have access problems like I said, the, the jet yeah. ski we can you know three or four guys can back the trailer you know manhandle the trailer down by hand drop it in Okay, well, that's been a big issue for us as well. It's just the uh, the access. Right. We've only got a few uh, boat ramps around town that we can use. That's what's good for the non-emergency, uh, the non-rescued people to be able to tell you what your best access Absolutely. points are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Recon work. Yeah. Yeah. Where can we get it in? They did a great job. Uh, unfortunately, we had we had a fatality, but on the big ditch the other day, uh, crews were letting us know where is going to be our best access points. You know, there's no you know, set up boat ramp on the big ditch for us, but there's some low spots, some uh, more stable ground and stuff like that that exactly. we can we can get. Especially gain with access. the high water situation we've had in the big ditch, we haven't had that in years. Oh goodness, Correct. yeah. Exactly. Um, so, what can we guys recommend to the citizens? What can they do to uh, prevent or uh, assist with anything with high water emergencies? Again, just I would just stay out of it. And, and respect the power of moving water. Was a three mile an hour current, which is not much, can hold you underwater. A five mile an hour current can pin you against something. And what's the what's the Airy. the pounds per square inch or whatever it is on that? Around waist level, deep five mile an hour is about 150 pounds of force on you. Wow. And not a whole lot of people can negotiate that. And wow. as this, the speed doubles, the force quadruples. So it's just a, a compounding factor. Right. right. So if they do get stuck in, you know, something, you know, an obstruction or something, they get swept away in swift water, there's a, there's a thing called a strainer, which would be like any debris or something like that. It's just a catch point. Um, if they can get up on top of a strainer, you know, if you're out of the water, you're kind of in a safe spot. We'll come get you, but don't, don't get back in the water. Well, just try to stay put. You're going to be stranded for a little bit. But stay put. If there is an obstruction in the water, like a, a bridge piling or a big rock or something like that, the downstream side of that creates what's called an eddy. And it's uh, calm water on the downstream side of it that is kind of a safe haven, really. If they can get to an eddy, they can, they can deal in it. So it would be actually be better if, if they happen to fall in the water or something occurred. Right. And what we, teach our guys, what we teach our guys, if they do happen to become separated from you know, a boat, a rope, the float on your back, feet pointed up, and feet pointed downstream. Okay. That way you can protect yourself from, if you see rocks coming or you feel debris, you can kind of push off of it. And what we tell them is point your head to the shore you want to go to. Of course, then you can always back swim and that'll kind of create a little bit of resistance and kind of move you naturally towards the shore. But head, to the, you know, head towards the shore and feet downstream. It's kind of a reclining position, really. Is if if you're going head first downstream and your foot gets caught, it's just going to take you down. Exactly. But if you're in a reclining position and you got your feet out in front of you, you can kick off rocks and stuff like that. And unfortunately, you know the river, the the ditch, it's got there's a, a lot of uh, concrete, rebar, stuff like that. There's a million things to get hung up on. But if you can get your feet out in front of you and kind of ferry yourself, but it's it's a little bit of a reclining position. Tip your feet towards the middle and it'll kind of push it towards the bank. And one more thing as far as recommendations from you guys, water on a roadway, um, you know, never drive through well, water. Well, they say turn around, don't drown. Exactly. You know, and it's amazing because we'll call, our station is, is on uh, Meridian, just south of Kellogg, and you know what Meridian is like when the high water comes up. So we'll call for barricades and stuff like that but it, to, to try to shut the road down, but it never fails. People drive around it. And exactly. we end up having to go get them, you know, out of the cars and stuff. Vehicles and that, that holds us up from Vehicles other will float a little bit. So if you can get you know, three or four foot of water, and if it's moving eight to 10 miles an hour, you get over 300 pounds of force pushing on a floating vehicle, it's gonna go off. It'll push it right down the road. And this rain we've had lately has been unprecedented for our area for oh, yeah. quite a few decades. Yeah. Well, with the uh, 
amount of low head dams that we have around the area and also the spillways I know at first on 21st Street and up also by 29th and Amman area mm -hmm. and you want to talk about some of your training and or what uh, occurs there yeah you know Wichita has several different spots where we have low head dams there's one at the keeper of the plains it's not it's pretty low profile there but the Lincoln Street Bridge uh, 21st Street up by the spillway 21st and West Street right. um, the one right there by uh, by the Indian Center is another one uh, if you get caught in a low head dam you're in big trouble because it comes off of there and it creates a turbine and which is what we refer to as a drowning machine you go over it it kicks you under it spits you out and it pulls you right back in and it's kind of like a tumbling washing machine there uh, very difficult to get somebody out of that and and your chances of survival aren't good especially if the water's moving really fast the uh, the spillways up at 21st and West Street and then up on North Amden. Um, not a lot of people know the one up by North Amden coming off the big ditch, but you all, everybody sees that one at 21st and West. Exactly. In fact, there was a picture of it in the paper of the water coming through there. I think those tubes were all but about that full. I mean, it was really moving. And there were people walking. They got a picture of somebody walking right above it on the, the concrete right there. Very dangerous. Yeah, without a life jacket on, yeah. you know. But even so, if they would have had it, I mean, one little slip, and you're in that, and you're gone. Okay. Scott, talk about some of your training that you would do if somebody was caught, like in a drowning machine, a boil situation below, below well, a dam. If, they're, if the dam's below a bridge, what we've done sometimes is we've set up a rope system from the top of the bridge down to what we call our RDC, which is a, a boat that basically water can run through it. It's just a, a big floating boat, and we can, through our ropes and pulleys, We'll actually pull that up in there and we can get into that boil area and get the people out. And we also have another boat downstream that will pull us back out of it and we'll just ferry them to the side. But if not, we'll be in the same situation with our boats because when you get close to that boil, you get to the point at that boil, it'll actually suck you in to the turbulence right there at the low head dam. It's a dicey rescue at best. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just it, it, it takes us a little while people. to get it set up exactly. as well. I know the, the low head dam uh, that's right underneath 21st Street. A lot of people don't know about it, but it's there. And uh, it's separated by the bridge pilings. So there's really like four or five mm -hmm. separate little low head dams in there. And uh, there's been people that got hung up in there and they were able to cling to the to the side. I think there's a couple little areas where they could hold on to. We had to repel somebody down in to get them and, then, and then pull them back up. Yeah. yeah. Derek Davis, I believe. Yeah, Davis on Davis A shift, yeah. If we, don't go, if we don't have to go in the water, we're not going into either. I mean, and that's something that we have to decide, mm -hmm. risk versus benefit, what we can do. Reach yeah. through a row, go. If we can't reach them, throw something to them, you know, row out to them, then we'll enter the water. Yeah, and we, we follow the same principles as we, as we also tell the public. We, yeah. Yeah, we don't enter the water unless it's last resort. The, the public needs to realize, too, that in you know, lakes and rivers, the water's not clear. It's not like a swim pool, obviously. Exactly. And, and I tell my guys, whenever we're training, nobody s dips a toe in the water without having flotation device on without live jackets and we wear helmets as well um, that drowning is the it's the silent killer I mean when somebody goes under they can't scream for help so the best thing to do is just a, a little bit of prevention don't go near a lake river stream anything like that without a life jacket on they say they work you know use them and Most your new equipment you just got with our recent grant that we received yep. it's really paid off this this rainy summer that we've yeah, had. Yeah, we've put it, we've deployed it and put it into play pretty quick. Not by choice, but. Exactly. Yeah. Most people that drown are people that can swim. Well, Scott, Brent, thanks for coming. I appreciate it today. Thanks for having us. If you'd like to become more involved in the city of Wichita, and if you would like to learn more about the Wichita Fire Department, you can go to wichita.gov fire department link and check us out on Facebook or call the Wichita Fire Department at 268-4441. That concludes this episode of Burning Issues. Our mission is to provide our community excellent proactive fire and life safety services through prevention, education, and protection. Remember, the Wichita firefighters are highly trained professionals who are your friends and neighbors. They are Wichita's bravest and they are somewhere serving you every day.